Hey, I'm Tommy. Welcome to another gear showdown. We've got four gimbals running the gauntlet today. The Ronin S, the Moza Air 2, the Moza Air Cross 2, and the G, G, I'm just gonna call it the Weeble S. Uh, if you're not familiar with this style of showdown that I like to do, I'm basically gonna be comparing four similarly priced gimbals going after the same market of tech thirsty filmmakers based on an arbitrarily created grading point scale in areas that are important to me. Hopefully this video is able to prevent you from needing to watch countless hours of reviews on your own. And I was given the Ronin S for Christmas and a year ago, and all these other gimbals were sent to me by various manufacturers. So I am, completely unbiased and I really don't care who wins. I just want to identify which one of these is the best value gimbal. As a forewarning, some of the things that are important to me might not be important to you and that's okay. Uh, these showdown videos aren't sponsored by anyone yet. And I have a few more planned over the next few weeks. Like uh, behind me is this ridiculous wall of RGBWW panels on a rig that isn't quite finished yet. I'm waiting on a couple more panels to do that one. And then I've already collected a bunch of different price level tripods and fluid heads that I'm gonna be doing another showdown on. If you wanna see those, just make sure you're subscribed. Gloves off, let's get into it. I need to set up a way to get these out of my face. Um, yeah, let's do this. Okay, yeah, I know it's a little wobbly. It's not perfect, but come on, that's cool, right? For the first category, we're gonna talk about price. The DJI Ronin S is gonna be the most expensive of the bunch. It comes in at $629 if you get the kit with the little focus wheel here. The command module, which I don't have, is another $129, and the follow focus module is gonna be another $155. That's a $913 total investment, and the command module is something we'll talk about in a little bit. The Moza Air 2 is gonna be $599, uh, or $658 with the iFocus module, the one that has the wire on it. The Moza Air Cross, there it is. Aircross 2 comes in at $449 or $618 with the wireless iFocus module. The Weeble S comes in at $439 for the gimbal or $519 with their focus kit. So the first point on affordability goes to the Weeble S for the lowest price. Before we get too deep into this, I just want to point out that if you already have a gimbal, you don't need to go sell your gimbal and get a different one to get smoother footage. You can get equally smooth footage with all of these gimbals and it's gonna come down to your technique and practice. This is going to be more of an overview for someone who's looking to get their first gimbal, most likely. And yeah, maybe if I just stand between these. Yeah, I think that works a little bit better. All right, uh, next we're gonna talk about build quality. Now we're gonna start with the Ronin S. The Ronin S uh, was my first gimbal and I've used it for a long time. It's all extremely solid metal. Um, everything about it feels like an expensive piece of filmmaking equipment. It feels really nice in the hand because the grip is like totally rubberized. Everything feels like you would expect a 600 plus dollar tool to feel like. I've always, I've never had a problem with the uh, DJI's build quality on their products, but the Ronin S really kind of stands out as one of my most solid pieces of gear that I've got in the studio here. It's a nice, nice little joystick. The buttons, they work really well. It's just everything comes apart really. It's just, I like it a lot. But we're gonna go talk about the Moza Air 2 now. It feels like plastic. It feels like it cost a lot less to make than the Ronin S, even though it has stronger motors and whatnot. The joystick on the back has a lot less like resistance. It's a lot easier to push from the sides, but it, it's not like a good thing. Like it feels, it just feels kind of cheap. All these pieces and parts made of plastic. The gimbal mechanism itself is really nice. I mean, it's a really high quality gimbal. Don't get me wrong, but it just, when comparing it to the Ronin S, it feels like the build quality is really lacking in a lot of areas on the Mose Air 2. Uh, moving over to the Aircross 2. Um, the Aircross 2 is leagues above the Moza Air 2. It's, it's, it seems like they took what they learned from the Moza Air 2 and people complaining about build quality and put that into the Moza Air Cross 2. Uh, I really like it. It's also got their nice little light up wheel on the sides. I don't usually turn these on without a camera attached. And I only feel comfortable doing that with the Moza Air Cross 2 and I'll explain why in a bit. But uh, I'll turn this off. I always torque down these handles. On the Aircross 2, I noticed that like it's not super tight and like this kind of falls off really easily. And that's kind of annoying. 
Even, even though you're gripping it as a handle, it's like it still feels like the little tripod pieces are kind of loose. But other than that, the build quality on the Aircross 2 is way better than the Moza Air 2. Finally, the uh, Zhiyun Weevil S. It's different, it's the cheapest gimbal, right? So I, I noticed when I'm tightening down this little tripod thing, going from the uh, regular tripod mode to inverted grip mode, when tightening it down, you can actually hear it. Like you can hear all the plastic flexing and that's that's kind of concerning. Um, and in fact, I've been paying attention to other people's reviews on the Weeble S and one I found, I think his name is uh, Vu Win of, uh, he has a YouTube channel, I'll link it. But the uh, his, uh, access locks all broke. It doesn't lock anymore. I mean, I think that goes into the cheapest build quality condition is, is it's the cheapest gimbal, but it also has the parts that might not last the longest in a more of a you get what you pay for style attitude. So the build quality point goes by far to the running S. Next topic is gimbal weight. Before we get into the weight though, I'm gonna be using the X-T3 for all of my gimbal reviews here with the 16 to 55 2.8. If you've watched any of my other gimbal reviews, I like to use the X-T3 in this lens because it has no stabilization and no sensor stabilization, no lens stabilization. Any smooth footage you see coming out of this camera is gonna be based off what the gimbal is doing. And also you probably see these quick release plates on all of the gimbals that I'm using. I like to do that because it just makes taking the camera on and off of all the gimbals really easy and quick and I've already balanced them all so I don't have to spend time trying to rebalance different quick release plates all the time. I have a whole bunch of them. When talking about which gimbal weighs the most, I think uh, most people already know that the DJI Ronin S is gonna weigh by far the most. It weighs 4.1 pounds. It's kind of a behemoth and very heavy. The Moza Air 2 comes in at uh, not much behind it. It's still significantly lighter than the Ronin S when you feel them in the hands together. This one is 3.53 pounds. Still kind of heavy, but a lot lighter than the Ronin S. The Moza Aircross 2 comes in at 2.09 pounds and the Weeble S comes in at 2.04 pounds. The Weeble S and the Aircross 2 are pretty close to each other, but because the Weeble S is just slightly less heavy, it gets two points and I'm gonna give the Aircross 2 one point. The next point is gonna be on the user interface and using the gimbal, how you control it and all that. So talking about the Ronin S, uh, it requires an app download before you can even start using it. And I think tools that make you do that are really kind of a pain. Um, then it requires the command interface, which is another $150 thing that you want. If you want to control the gimbal modes and settings without using an app. The app works incredibly well for controlling the Ronin S, but I hate that you are required to use it. I think that too many filmmaking tools require you to download an app and connect it to your phone in order to use them. And I think we need less tools that do that. The Moza Air 2 was ready to go out of the box for me with ideal settings, the scroll wheel and the, you know, the scroll wheel, the joystick, they all work really great. The app pairs and works really well with your gimbal if you care about using the app, which I don't. Um, if you don't want to deal with the app, you don't really have to, but there are some weird icons that you have to learn and spend a few minutes, you know, watching some videos to figure out what they mean. Once you learn the icons, then it's okay. And the, uh, the interface for using it makes sense, but you do got to spend the time learning how to use the gimbal. Out of the box, it's pretty confusing. And the same more so even goes for the Air Cross 2. It's equally uh, even more so confusing to use without an app because there are less buttons on the back interface section here. So the app becomes more of a requirement than um, an option. It can be more frustrating to figure out how to use than the Moza Air 2 was. As for the Weeble S, I tried downloading two separate apps for the Weeble S and neither of them would pair with the gimbal. Both apps had terrible ratings in the app store. And so I don't really know how the app actually works. And I am I know I can't be the only one having this issue. So I'm not gonna keep wasting my time and trying to figure it out. The interface on the gimbal itself has just enough buttons and switches to make doing what you need to do easy enough to figure out. So I do like that but I do not like how I had to sacrifice the ability to use an app altogether because it just won't even work for me. 
And so although the gimbal has a lot of really nice switches and is really easy to figure out how to use, and because this gimbal has the opposite problem of the Ronin S, I was able to use it, but wasn't even able to download or use the app at all, while the Ronin S wouldn't even, you couldn't even use it until you downloaded the app. I'm still gonna rate the Weeble S better on interface and getting started than the Ronin S. However, the Moza Air 2 will get the best user interface point because one, the app works really well when you wanna use it, and two, you can use it out of the box without the app. All right, next point is gonna be for the ease of daily use, travel, balancing, and whatnot. Uh, so for the Ronin S, while no doubt was a pain in the ass to actually set up and get started once you first get the gimbal, it's absolutely a treat to use after you've already done all the dirty work. And the fact that the battery just completely detaches from the whole gimbal itself and makes for easy storage and packing is kind of like a really good bonus. But balancing different lenses and switching out bodies can be kind of a pain and a little frustrating because there are no access locks. And when you're trying to balance uh, the gimbal, there's these little bumps on the motors that get in the way and you really have to torque down these screws in order to get them out of the way. I've just kind of found it frustrating. It's extremely annoying to walk around with because, because there's no access locks, you get that annoying clicking and banging sound constantly and you like have to wrap it up with twist ties or something to prevent that. So usually if I have this with me, it's getting stuffed in a backpack because I don't want to hear it clicking and banging around. As for the Moza Air 2, it's really easy to use if you've set it up before and once you've learned how to quickly enable and disable certain axes and you've learned what all the weird icons mean, you really know how useful this gimbal can end up being. It's got one axis lock which makes balancing your gimbal a way, way easier than balancing the Ronin S. But the battery can't be broken into separate parts like the Ronin S, so traveling with it is a little bit uh, more cumbersome because it takes up like a whole backpack. And unless you want to completely unbalance your gimbal so you can fit it in the original carrying case, um, it's you're gonna have to have it st strapped to the side of a bag or something where it's more likely to get bumped around. Now for the Moza Aircross 2, they've solved some of the problems that I had with the Moza Air 2. It's It folds up completely into itself really easily every single one of the gimbal's axes go 360 degrees and it's the only one in this competition that actually does that. Not only does that make it easier for traveling, but it's also the only one that you can do that with and not worry about the lens hitting itself if you've balanced it that way. It also is the only gimbal I would recommend for vertical videos because of this interesting uh, quick release plate mechanism they have. Basically you just uh, take it off and slide it in vertically now you've got a gimbal ready for a vertical video. So if your plan is to do vertical video, right there, the only gimbal I would recommend is the Moza Aircross 2. Both Moza's gimbals have this nice little jog wheel that makes changing the speed that your gimbal operates at uh, really easy, responsive, and quick to adjust. And I find that super useful if you don't want to spend time going in and creating another preset follow mode. And because all three axes are 360 degrees, which we've already talked about, you can do some really interesting things with the Aircross 2 that you just simply can't do with all the other gimbals. But as for the Weeble S, let's get that lens hood back on there. It is the smallest gimbal due to the interesting form factor and it has three axis locks, of course. What I really like about the Weeble S, it is the only gimbal that has a built-in way to easily hold it in an inverted position. None of the other gimbals offer something like that and it's, it's really unique to this gimbal's design. Now I have I find myself wanting to hold the gimbal like this almost all the time because it's just, it's so comfortable, it feels like a top handle and you can go into like this mode really easily. And something that is kind of annoying about this gimbal is once you have it into this inverted uh, grip mode, I mean, you can't really use the tripod thing anymore, it doesn't, like it's it won't balance and this then you have to like awkwardly turn the gimbal off turn take this thing off and then you know stick it back on the bottom and that's that's kind of frustrating i do wish that it came with another handle so in order to get the best ease of use of the functionality you need to buy a third party accessory or an additional handle and i think that's kind of annoying but 
it does have the option built in and that's no fault of the Weeble S manufacturer. On top of that, it seemed like the Weeble S was the easiest to balance different lenses on. Maybe it's because they have this, the way their locking mechanisms for sliding the quick release plate uh, forward, backward, left and right. Um, I really like it, it's, it's really simple to use. Another thing I don't like about the daily use of it is I don't like this lack of a joystick they have. They instead have this weird sliding directional pad thing. Um, I, I really prefer the tactile feel of uh, an actual joystick, but maybe maybe that's just a personal preference. Despite all that and without being able to actually find the app to use, um, I was still able to get it set up, control it the way I needed to. All of them have their pros and cons, whether it be an easy user interface, easy to balance, or the app actually works and easy to configure. The Ronin S, as far as daily driver ability, has the most cons with all the clanking and uh, you know, having to register with your app and use the app to set different modes. So I'm just gonna subtract a point from the Ronin S. Next category is maximum weight capacity. Now, if we're going with advertised weight, then the Ronin S can hold eight pounds and the Moza Air 2 can hold 9.25 pounds. The Aircross 2 is down at 7.05 pounds and the Weeble S is just unlisted. But um, I mean, all these gimbals can hold pretty much anything that I've thrown at them, barring different sizes. We're gonna try the GFX 100 on here in just a minute or two. Now the clear winner here is the Moza Air 2 if you read the specs. I'm pretty sure Josh over at Make Art Now is gonna disagree with me though, because uh, he's done some pretty wild stuff with his Ronin S. So I'm gonna give both of these a point. Next up, we've got maximum battery life. Uh, the Ronin S will run for 12 hours on a full charge, and the Moza Air 2 will run for 16 hours with fully charged batteries. The Moza Air Cross 2 is down at 12 hours, and the Weeble S is at 14 hours. Now, the Moza Air 2 gets the point, but when you consider inactive battery drain, all three of the other gimbals can last for several weeks with a single charge. But with the Moza Air 2, I notice if I charge it to full and then just let it set for a couple weeks, that the batteries will drain down to completely empty. So there's a net zero points there. And the Moza Air 2 is the only one that doesn't have USB charging, so minus a point for that. I also was able to balance cameras as large as the Fujifilm GFX100 on all of the gimbals. The Weeble S seemed to have the hardest time with it, and the Moza Air Cross 2 could only balance it vertically, so for vertical video. The Ronin S seemed to be punching way above its weight class, and the sport mode on the Ronin S is way faster than all the other gimbals. All the other gimbals are pretty close in speed as far as if you're trying to record fast-moving sports at close range but the Ronin S seems like the motors are underrated and overperform, so keep that in mind. Other special considerations, um, I'm gonna give an extra point to the Ronin S for being the heaviest gimbal. So if your goal with a gimbal is to get smooth footage on every axis, including the vertical axis, then the Ronin S is gonna be a better bet for that. And uh, the Weeble S gets an additional point for specifically for their additional top handle design. I didn't give them a point specifically for that yet, and it deserves one because that's a really useful feature to have on a gimbal like this. I'm also gonna give one extra point to the Moza Air Cross 2 because working with the Slypod, you can achieve sort of a smooth motion control thing like you would with the Rhino Arc 2 slider system, but it takes a ton of setup. But just the fact that it's possible with the Slypod, we've got here, we haven't had a chance to review it yet, but we're talking about it now. I really, I was gonna do a whole video on it, uh, but I just decided not to because there's a guy, Morrow's Films, I'll have a link to it in the description and a card up here or whatever. He did a whole tutorial on how to use the Moza Slypod and how to pair it and use it with the Aircross 2 to get those interesting motion control shots. So go watch his video if you want to learn how to do that. But what it seems like is Moza is trying to take advanced and expensive filmmaking concepts and make them accessible to the more budget conscious market. And I can appreciate that and that's why they get the point for that. And on the topic of sliders and the slide pod and motion control and stuff, I think an honorable mention is deserved by the Zeppin Zeppin, I think it's Zeppin Micro 2. This is a fluid dampened slider and it is very easy and simple to use and get a consistent speed motion with. And what I've been doing is mounting it on a fluid head and then setting the angle of it uh, with this little ball head and the fluid head locking it down, 
putting the camera on it and then it'll just slowly kind of slide really nice and smoothly. Or you can push it and because it has, it's a fluid dampened, it's really easy to get a consistent speed however you want to use it. It's definitely the best manual slider that I've ever used. I haven't done a full review on it and I don't know if I'm going to because it's something that I use in most of my videos now. And I find it difficult to review things that I'm constantly using because then I just want to use them to review the thing that I'm talking about. Does that make sense? I really like this slider. It's one of the best that I've used, meaning that it's the only one that I actually use and haven't stuffed it in my gear closet to collect dust. Back to gimbals. So when it comes down to it, everyone has different needs. And while the best gimbal, according to this video, might not be the best gimbal for you, it's still good to know what things you might need to consider and which one might be the best value, in my opinion, anyways. If you wanna check out more info on any of the things I talked about in this video, links are in the description. And if you like this video, pay it forward with a thumbs up. And until the next one, make sure you've lit up the subscribe button. It's free. All right, I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.